portions of this program are brought to you by Curry Companies and Curry Residential, your Caldwell Banker, providing real estate services since 1902. Scouting here in Dublin has a very storied past, and that history is being written still today. We currently have 136 individual participants in scouting here in Dublin, Lawrence County. And remarkably, over the last couple years, 16 of the young men in this community have earned the right to become an Eagle Scout. And I will tell you, nowhere throughout the 24 counties that we cover in our council, if you look at how many people are in scouting and how many become an Eagle Scout, nobody does it better than here, Dublin, Lawrence County. It's a tribute to the young men that you are raising here and the adult leaders uh, that you have uh, working with them and supporters of them. Thank you for having me here today. I look forward to this because I'm here to talk about a good friend. And I have an old saw about friendship. If you have five friends, you can count on the fingers of one hand that you could call in the dead of the night and without equivocation at all, they would be there. I think you're very fortunate, very lucky. And out of that five, if there was even two or one that you could share the deepest and the darkest and most intimate concerns of your soul with, and know that you would never be betrayed, the good Lord has blessed you. And he's blessed me with the friendship of Ben Hall, my friends for 56 years, since we met at the University of Georgia, 1962. Now, you know, the first thing that's a sort of a, a honor amongst thieves, old fraternity brothers don't tell a lot on each other. You can't afford to do that. But um, I think we need to remember this thing about friends. We have friends that uh, we've all known for many years, and we like to see them, and we speak to them from time to time, and we stay in touch. But the true friends are the ones that you really, truly do share your lives with. All of the disappointments that come, and all the victories that come, and the joys and the sorrows. And that's what true friendship is all about. It doesn't have to be carried on in a message to anybody. It's just how you share the main things in your life. But you know, Ben follows in his great success and accomplishments. Financially, he's been extremely successful. And let me tell you why. Ben followed religiously that principle that is taught in all of the great schools of economics around the world, from the London School of Economics to Wharton, you name it. And it's a pretty simple process, but it works. And it goes like this. If you want to make a small fortune in life, you start out with a pretty big one. Now, I would say that Ben, and I know you best to understand me, I'm not saying that he was born with a silver spoon, but he sure knows how to use one. His greatest accomplishment in life, though, without a doubt, was marrying his wonderful partner, Callie. Beautiful Callie, who has stuck with him through all of these years, been his partner, his supporter, but you know, when I first saw Ben and Callie together, I knew right then that they would be married. And I'll tell you why. It was obvious to everybody who saw those two together that they were both in love with the same man. <laughs> it takes a minute to get that one. Yeah. <laughs> I want to take just a minute 
and it would take much longer and too long for the program here today. That mic was set up for somebody much taller than me to read you a few of the things. And this was shared to me by an anonymous person who talked about a lot of his anonymous uh, good deeds that he's done in his life. But I want to take just a minute. Most of you know that Ben has been actively involved in Habitat for Humanity. And it's one of those places where not only he's given greatly of resources, donating slabs for each Habitat for Humanity house constructed in Lawrence County, and then gave roughly 10 acres of property on Kellum Road to the Habitat Project. But he actually swung a hammer and worked on some of the first habitat houses himself and did something that most of us in Georgia never see him do, he sweated. <laughs> you notice how dapper he always is and how fine and finished he always looks, but I know differently, and you do too, that he worked like the devil coming up to make Dublin Construction what it is today. I was told that by a person who knows him well, that there were many times when there would be a need of a person involved with the bank, that Ben would take his fee for the directorship and give it to this person and say, get it to that person, but don't let them know where it came from. There were times of very serious things within the family of the bank and Ben always came through. He's helped countless employees of both his company and the bank over the years to catch up on their low payments as well. From Tim Lake, who owns uh, T. Lake Environmental Design, he talked about Ben and his giving to the leadership to the Boy Scout units in Lawrence County. He's led by example through advice and wisdom and willingness to use his influence and connections to help scouting in the Pine Forest District. And it has also been one of the largest benefactors of scouting in Lawrence County. And let me tell you, and this goes for every one of us in this room here today, there are a lot of fortunate, successful people here. You should ask yourself, when has it been since I put my hand on the shoulder of a young lady or a young boy starting out in life and let them know that I really cared, not your family, but a kid in this community, that I really care about you, that I care what you're going to do with your life. And I want you to know that I'm a friend that you can come to and share with. And I won't betray your confidence. I'll help you share the load. Mentoring this young generation, my friends, is one of the most important things, and I spoke to the State Board of Education on that this week. It's not always being taught in the homes. It has to be taught by conscientious citizens and good people. And I'll say a little bit more about that in just a minute. We were fraternity brothers at Georgia, and Ben was known, loved, and respected in the fraternity. And just a few years ago, he led the way for a program to rebuild the Sigma New House. Now, I know a lot of people think about fraternities as the party place, and there was a time when that was all that was done. But the world's changed. They still have the great parties. But let me tell you, after that, a group of young men went to work with Ben, and they had started the ball rolling. And with Ben's help and, and sponsorship of that reconstruction of that fraternity house in Georgia, the Sigma Nu Fraternity House at the University of Georgia was named not only the outstanding Sigma Nu House, it was named the most outstanding fraternity on any college campus in America. And Ben's hand was influential. He's done great things for the University of Georgia. And you most of this, you know ahead of time. But let me tell you, he has eminent political influence in this state and in the right circles and with the powers. And you know how he got it? 
He didn't buy it. He earned it. It's his judgment, his character, and his wisdom that elected officials want to associate with. He served on a number of boards, but today on the Georgia Ports Authority, and let me tell you, you can talk about Hartsfield International Airport. Go see the port of Savannah. Outside of the metropolitan area, there's not a single economic entity that's more important to the state or touches its communities and its people and our lives more than that port. And most of us don't even know it. But it is an incredible facility, and he's one of those special people entrusted with it. Well, let me close my comments with this, and I wanted to be brief because there are others to follow me. When I was in office in Washington from 83 to 80 to 93, and I like to remind folks I left of my own choosing, I wasn't run out of town. But I constantly was asking myself the question from the day I walked on the hill, what is it that makes this country the great country and gives it the great strength and influence that it has around the world? I was reminded of Alec de Tocqueville, the French historian's comments when he came here, and he left to report to the French people why America was rising to the peak, absolute peak of industrial main, uh, might in the world. And he went back home and he said something like this. He said, I've traveled America and I've searched for her greatness in her matchless constitution but I did not find it there. He said, I searched for it in her mighty armadas and her armies, and I didn't find it there. And I searched for it in its heartlands, in its great agricultural productivity, and I didn't find it there. He said, it was not until I went into the homes and the churches and the communities of America that I found where greatness comes from. And it comes because America is good. And as long as she ceases to be good, she will be great. Now, that came through to me as this. I finally decided that it wasn't all of that power. It wasn't all of those matchless marble buildings and the great orators and the great armadas. It was the life lived by every American citizen. And those of us in this room have to remember there's a tremendous responsibility on those of us who leave, live good lives that keeps the cart in the middle of the road. Not in one ditch or the other, but steady down the road. There are always the pitfalls on either side. And there are those who do not share our patriotism and who do not share our love for this country and who are not self-sufficient, but look to America only for what it can give them. And Ben Hall has been the antithesis of that. He's been, in his life, the kind of model that makes America great, my friends. He loves his family. He loves his friends. He loves his wife. He loves his community. What more can we say about him? So I'm here to salute my good friend, Ben Hall, and let's give him the applause. You wouldn't buy a gallon of milk and immediately pour 70% of it out, would you? Then why would you do that with power for your home? 70% of electricity is lost on the way to your house, making it only 30% efficient. But natural gas is 92% efficient. Electricity is good to power your lights and electronics, but using natural gas for certain appliances is the most cost-effective, energy-efficient, and environmentally friendly mix for your home. Use it. Don't lose it. Choose the right energy mix. Choose natural gas. I have the good fortune to be considered, I hope, one of Ben's friends. Uh, Ben's uh, family moved to Dublin in 1945. My family followed shortly after in 1946. Uh, our fathers both built businesses here 
and we were fortunate to be able to return and work right beside them. The heritage of Dublin Construction Company provided a, a basis for men to build Dublin and beyond. He graduated from the D Dublin High School in 1961 and headed to Southern Tech. I graduated the next year and went to the other technical school in Atlanta. Ben, uh, known by, as Cuz by a lot of his friends, I think that's what Lindsay and all the Sigma News called him. Uh, and, and I became much, much closer friends in the winter of 1964. Uh, we were both at Middle Georgia College and sort of deciding where we wanted to go. It was at that time that men met a lady named Callie Chapman. And I also found a lady named Rachel Vandiver in Athens that, that Valentine's Day of the winter of 64. During the summer of 64, we ended up at 135 and a half Glentrest Drive as students at the University of Georgia living in Athens as roommates. Callie worked in Atlanta for the State Board of Education and uh, often after I would take Rachel home, uh, Ben and I would enjoy fine dining at the varsity and then if we didn't get enough of a, the <clears throat> doubles through the garden there, we would go on over to have breakfast in the wee hours of the morning uh, with Rena and Grover at a place called the Open House. Uh, Sunday lunch was usually followed up at the Mayflower Restaurant, which is, still exists across from the Arch. There were fraternity parties at places like, like Moena Michael Auditorium, where the Toyota dealership is in Athens today. Uh, and Ben was a true participant in the party. He had a big time uh, and had better time than most. He was quite often seen on the stage dancing with James Brown of the Tams. Uh, he would, uh, you know, dance to Stubborn Kind of Fellow, which I consider to be his theme song. Uh, Marvin Gaye was one of his favorites. Jackie Wilson was one of his favorites. And I think that My Way uh, by Frank Sinatra could also be part of his mantra. Uh, the, my way is the right way, according to Ben. <laughs> uh, we both worked after school in the rag business in Athens. He at Guns and me at a store called Gibson's. Uh, every style of Florsheim wingtip shoe that they made, he bought because he could buy them wholesale. Uh, ben, do you still have any of those? Do they still fit? That's what I wanted to know. Rachel was going to want to cook dinner for Ben. And she took a seasoned frying pan that my mother had given her and she fried chicken to a golden brown. And she was planning on serving green beans and rice and gravy. She cooked the rice just like her mother would, put it in the colander that we had bought at Kmart, which we paid maybe 49 cents for. It was plastic. She poured the rice in the, in the collar, went to steam it, and the collar melted and folded up. Uh, she tried to make gravy. The, the gravy would have made better paper mache than gravy. And the chicken that was golden brown and perfectly cooked on the outside was very rare, rarer than any steak uh, that was served today. Uh, and that's not the way Ben, uh, Ben likes his chicken, but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we were, I guess he saw how happy Rachel and I were, at least he didn't hear us fighting, and he decided that it was time for he and Callie to hook up, and they got married about seven months later in July of 66. Uh, shortly after that, we landed in Dublin, and we were among the youngest couples in town. Uh, I think the next youngest couple was probably 10 or 15 years older than we were. I don't know why they didn't come, nobody came back during that time. Uh, but we had to sort of fend our own way. 
uh, the Halls and Brown families became very close friends, closer than before. And then Jim and Joanne Hilburn moved home as soon as Jim's military service was over, and they became another arc in the circle of friendship. Everyone was always present when children were born and all at their first birthdays. We would often vacation together. We spent virtually every Christmas Eve from the time we moved back here together until it got to where the too many children and grandchildren to uh, have that happen. Uh, the children grew up, got married, have families, some moved away, yet so many grandchildren, and now it's just us back to the way it all started. We are so fortunate to have grown up in a time and place that we did. Dublin was a Camelot. For those of you that were around the 60s, you all know what Camelot was about. It was a bright and shining place. And Camelot then and Camelot today exist in Dublin in a great part due to the man we honor today. Uh, in short, there's simply not a more congenial spot for happily ever after than here in Dublin. I challenge the generations to come to keep that congenial and shining place. And thank you for what you have done, Ben, being a true friend, taking care of the community, and taking care of your family and friends. And I appreciate it. At Morris Bank, we understand that your personal finances and banking experiences can be stressful. We also know that it doesn't have to be that way. That's why for over 60 years, we've dedicated ourselves to providing common sense banking to people just like you. Even when I started working here, there was a definite vibe that you felt when you walked in the door, from the music that you're always going to hear playing to the, hello, good to see you, welcome, how can we help you? You know, it's just a different experience when you bank here. We work hard to combine the latest online mobile technology and top-notch customer service that allows us to do just that. We realize our customers have choices, but what sets us apart is the personal service that we provide that they may not receive at larger institutions. We like to make you feel at home and we like to make the process as easy as possible when you're banking with us. But we're not focused on helping just our customers. We are equally dedicated to supporting the community we are a part of. Just this year alone, we've logged thousands of community service hours and provided significant financial support to the communities we serve. Something that sets us apart at Morris Bank is what we give back to the communities in which we serve. And as the communities continue to grow, that brings more business and more industry into the area. And it's just this circle effect of, of giving back and, and receiving what the community can offer. We want to make sure you have the best banking experience possible. Come see us or give us a call to find out what makes Morris Bank different because we're banking on you. I'm sure most of you out there are wondering why a kid like me is standing up here speaking to a group like this about a man who has meant so much to this, this community. I didn't know what Lindsay was going to get up and tell you, but what I would say is Lindsay nailed it. It's because Ben Hall Jr. decided many moons ago that he was going to make a difference to a lot of different generations. Not the generation that he was in, not the next one, but on down the line. And that's where Tom and Ben Gillis and I are, are in that generation. So thank you, Ben. Now, my whole life, people told me that I should respect my elders. And I swear I do my best to do it. <laughs> my dad's here, so he would probably disagree at times. But I think we need to get a couple of things out of the way. There are parts about what I'm going to say today that are very serious. And being there are parts that need to be taken with a grain of salt. And the reason I say that is because you have a way with words that I think should be preserved for a very long time. 
Dan, you've made an impression on so many people in this room, this community, and the people who work for you. And speaking of the people who work for you, many of them are here today. But I reached out to three people who have spent a long time with you, and that is William Key, Jimmy Williams, and Glenn Boatwright. These three men, along with countless others, have spent a lifetime at a company that Tom's granddad and your father built starting in 1945. So please bear with me as I read this because I don't want to get what they said wrong. I think it's appropriate that they're quoted. This is from William Key. There is one immutable fact about Ben Hall that I have learned over 40 years with working with him. If Ben ever makes this statement, come here and let me show you a better way to do this. It's always five minutes before lunch and you should do this. The first, th the first thing is go grab a peanut butter jelly sh sandwich and inhale it because you're gonna be with him a while. The other thing is practice this phrase, patience is a virtue, patience is a virtue. And occasionally say, Ben, that's a great idea because if you say this, it will hasten the, the ending that you so dearly need. But this is the best part, and this is from William. Once finished, look at Ben square in the eye and say thanks a lot, and go ahead and do what you had planned to do in the first place. <laughs> On a serious note, William says, I would not have had him be any different, and I have enjoyed our working relationship through the years. Jimmy Williams says, most family-owned businesses, and I can relate with this, do not do as well or even survive as they pass from one generation to another. That has not been the case with Ben Hall and Dublin Construction. He has put forth the effort and the dedication needed to establish the framework and continued success for years to come. I have always appreciated his attention to detail as well as his vision for the big picture. The challenge for me has, to been, the challenge for me has, to, has been to do both at the same time, but not for Ben Hall. I am proud to have worked with him for over 20 years. Maybe one day he can show me how to enjoy retirement. I don't, I don't know that Ben's enjoying retirement. Maybe you've fooled a few. But Jimmy's not ready to retire just yet. And from Glenn Boatwright, working for Ben Hall at BH Hall Ready Mix Concrete since 1972 has been an honor and a privilege. Ben's affection for the employees and the community of Dublin and Lawrence County is overwhelming. His frequent acts of kindness and encouragement to his employees show his servant heart towards others, and that is in bold letters. I still have personal notes from him of appreciation and encouragement that he wrote me over the past 46 years. This quote fence Ben Hall to perfection. Show me a company that is efficient, progressive, dynamic, and organized and I will be willing to guarantee that behind the scenes at the top of the company is a well-disciplined, determined leader. And he's talking about you, Ben. Now, for the reason I stand before you today, I think it's appropriate to say thanks. Thanks from a generation of friends and family that you, my friend, decided many moons ago to mentor and have a positive influence on. What you've meant to me personally and a few others in my generations is very difficult to sum up. So with that said, I Google two words, mentor and influence. Now I will say this, Ben, I think you were way ahead of your time and you didn't know it because in my opinion, you're the original Google. Because in 2.2 <laughs> nanoseconds, you're gonna tell me who, what, when, where, and why, whether I ask you or not. I'm going to find mentor, as it's defined by Webster, a trusted counselor or guide. Ben, that's exactly who you are. You're a true friend who took me and a few others on as a project many years ago. You're always one to give advice on any and every topic, and while most don't understand this, it's exactly what we need. Spence Mullis is another project that you took on, and he can't be here today, sadly, and he sent something that he would like to say, and this is quote. Ben, the trait I most admire in you is your generosity. You've always professed that the more you give to people, causes, and organizations, the more that comes back to you. And I thank you. I think that's the common theme today, Ben. I saved influence for last because you have a way with words like no other person I have ever met in my life. The definition of influence is the power or capacity 
of causing an effect in an indirect or intangible way. The difference with that that I would add on is sometimes I think your method is more direct and not indirect, and I'm sure Tom can attest to that. With that direct dialogue, Spence and I many years ago, and you may or may not know this, so I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag. We started writing down the things that you say to us. So in my best Ben Hall dialect, I'm gonna give you a few of those, okay? Now, some of these phrases have, have been appropriate for different subjects, but the meaning is always the same. And I, I need to put this away because I've got to use my hands too. Michael, if you want the tree to grow, you got to trim it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and as he says trim it, he's literally trimming it with his finger. <laughs> this is from Spence. You've got to kill one snake at the time, the one in front of you. If you go looking for the second snake, the first if you go looking for the second snake, the first snake will come up and bite you. While most of these sayings are appropriate for the lecture we're receiving at the give, given moment, my favorite, my favorite of all time, and this will apply to each and every person sitting in this room today. Michael, life is not a dress rehearsal. And if you haven't heard Ben Hall say that, then he hasn't taught you. Life is truly not a dress rehearsal. And no, it's not, Ben. And by living in that manner, you've impacted more lives than you will ever know by delivering that message. As I close today, I want to, I want to take a real personal snapshot into my life. Outside of my father and Louie, there was only one more person that my granddad dearly loved. And that was you, Ben Hall. He loved you. You and Tom Hall were in the hospital room the day that he died. In fact, you were, you were the last two people he talked to. And on his dying bed, he said these words to you. He said, will you promise me that you'll do your best to look after Michael? And I can honestly say, Ben, that you have done that and more. You are a mentor, but better yet, you're my friend. I want to congratulate you and your family on this award, and I wish you the very best. Thank you. Imagine a life-changing injury. Imagine the fear and unknown. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team, the only physicians in the area with advanced certification in orthopedic sports medicine, treat sports injuries with innovative techniques. The Houston Clinic has helped nearly a million athletes live without pain. Imagine getting back in the game. Imagine the best game of your life. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team. At this time, I want to call up Mr. Dale Bunker and Dr. J. Roy Rowland for the presentation of the 2018 Distinguished Citizen Award. Let me say while they are, they are coming up that this is a really a wonderful occasion for more than one reason. It has given me an opportunity to see again my very dear friend and former colleague, Lindsay Thomas, and to learn about the close friendship uh, that you two have. Lindsay, it's good to see you. Kelly, we all know that uh, Ben would not have even come close to accomplishing the many things that he did had it not been for you. So in recognition of that, Thank let you. me present these flowers to you. Thank you. <laughs> ben, this is a very special occasion to me, too. We uh, came to Dublin more than 60 years ago. We came to be close friends with your mom and dad, uh, Ben and Pitt, very special people, close friends since 1954. So on behalf of the Middle Georgia Council of the Boy Scouts of America, it's a great honor for me to present to you this citizenship award. My congratulations to you. Jay Roy, thank you so very, very much. J. Roy, how old are you now? You want me to really tell them about yeah, that? Yeah, I want to tell them. 
92. 92 <laughs> years old. This is one of the greatest guys in our community, and we've been so blessed that he moved from Wrightsville, Georgia, over here. Herschel Walker didn't come, but you did. Thank you. <laughs> and <clears throat> Jay Roy was a doctor, and he was in Congress. He's been such a great influence on everybody. Even Tom Perry is hard-headed as oh, he is. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank Listen, you. I want to thank everybody uh, today. I'm humble by your presence, and I'm thankful for all the kind words, and Lindsay and Bill and Michael. You know, I, <clears throat> all I can say is thank you very much. Um, to my friends that have come a long way, um, and Nelson, you heard your old saying about this ain't a dress rehearsal. <laughs> Nelson, uh, I don't know whether he coined it or not, but he passed it on to me. I'll tell you how this happened. Um, one day, Nelson's always had everything. He's got all the toys in the world. And by the way, Nelson and I went to college together just like Lindsay. And um, same fraternity. And so we were talking one day, and <clears throat> I was thinking about getting an airplane. And uh, I said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I, that, I said, I, my father would roll over in his grave if he thought I did something like that. And, and Nelson said, bang. And I said, what? And he said, this ain't no dress rehearsal you're attending. And I said, what? What are you talking about? He said, life. And um, I think those words, again, going back to Michael's uh, comments, can ring a bell for all of us that life goes by in a hurry. And um, whether you're doing things and thanking people and whatever you feel like is important, don't ever wait till the to the gases out of the tank, Michael. <laughs> uh, you got to keep. You got to. You need to take care of business when business needs to be taken care of. Um, Callie, thank you for putting up with me for all these years, and Tom, thank you for not leaving me. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm deeply appreciative of this day and this honor, not to know that I deserve it. Uh, there's many people that give more. One of the greatest things that I hope that y'all also remember when you leave here is that helping any young people in Boy Scouts is so important. Then the other thing that I feel strongly about is habitat. Giving someone a place to live and giving them not a hand out, but a hand up and let, because they have to be a part of it. That, that, those are critical, critical things in people's lives and it's such a small thing that we can do um, to help those in need. So with that, I again thank you for coming. Uh, my friends John and Phyllis Patterson drove up this morning from Savannah. My good friend um, Ted Graham, where is Ted? Ted came in from Florida. He used to live in Duck. <laughs> well, that's where you need to be, Jack. <laughs> and. Uh, Nelson Bowers, my true, true close friend, um, and Sam Baker, and David Allen, and Mort Center. If you guys would thank y'all for coming. They came all the way from Chattanooga for this event. So I, I, thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Ben. I'm going to leave you with this. I hadn't planned to say this, but I am going to leave this with you because I think it's appropriate for, for Ben. Um, I feel like I'm at halftime or I'm, I'm in the beginning of the third quarter of my life. 
But there's a lot of kids out there who are in the first quarter of their life that hang on to words and actions that everybody in this room does to them. And the thing that I remember most about growing up, the people who spent time with me and the people who took the time to talk to me meant a lot to me. And Ben Hall, you led by example. And I think it's important that the rest of us do that. So with that said, I want to thank everyone for taking time out of their Thursday to attend this luncheon. And on behalf of the committee, congratulations, Ben. Thanks.